Kristen from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and I'm here with some questions and answers for everybody that sent in those delicious questions to us that we can help you out in any way we can. We're always glad to do it here on YouTube for you. So here we go. Uh, Abby Nagel, who is a long, long time friend of mine, she is in Buffalo, New York, and she wanted to know her dog has really dry coat and she's just he has really profuse coat and she's having a hard time you know controlling it and getting it how she wants to and i think that this is a very common problem this time of year because it's so much drier in our houses we have the heat on in a, a lot of places in north america and probably all over europe and of course the heat dries out the coat more um, then you know if they're getting wet and then you're drying them more as they come inside etc etc can really take a lot of wear and tear on those profuse coats it can even take wear and tear on some of those you know shorter coated breeds you're going to notice that they do get some dandruff so but for those profuse coats this is what I recommend I really do like the Chris Christensen day-to-day -day shampoo and conditioner now they have oatmeal in them, which is soothing, moisturizing. We all know that, like a lot of us switch to like maybe even a heavier moisturizer this time of year, and that's really gonna help you. But one of my hacks to this is that I'm going to get the Spectrum One Hydro Pack, and into my day-to-day -day conditioner, I'm gonna put maybe three heaping tablespoons of the Hydro Pack and really emulsify it with my submersion blender. You know, we had that video on YouTube, you can look it up again. And that is really gonna get that, sh that conditioner all emulsified in that water. And then I want you to put that conditioner on your dog, but don't stop there. I want you to like really massage it in there and leave it in for a good 10 minutes. Like you really need to give those products a chance to work. And that's one of the things that I really do notice with people is that they'll buy the products, but they don't really use them according to directions or according to suggestions. But one of the biggest things you can do is actually leave the product on your dog so that it has enough time to work. If you're just simply putting it on with one hand and rinsing it off with the other, it's not going to help you out. So once you've left it in for 10 minutes, um, you can rinse it out. And maybe I won't rinse it all the way out. Like you're not gonna get a stickiness or any kind of residue with that combination as long as you've diluted the day-to-day -day conditioner according to directions and then just added the Hydro Pack in. It's not gonna leave a re residue, it's not gonna mat up, but it is really gonna leave the moisture in. So I would say rinse it out 90%, like leave a little bit of conditioner in at the end. And I think that's really gonna help you. So thanks for your question, Abby. And you know, send us in some more questions. I really love that you love the Coral Slicker and that you sent that in to me, that that tip really worked for you. So happy holidays. Um, my next question comes from Corey. I'm not even gonna pronounce her last name, but she's from the Netherlands. And she has a poodle and he has a really hard time keeping his head up in the ring like he wants to like poke it out and just be really excited so i asked her if he had a favorite toy or a favorite thing and she said that he goes absolutely crazy for his ball so i don't know if you saw one of our videos from one of the seminars we did this summer with christy but christy had the same problem with the poodle and we found the magic stick her poodle really really loved a stick stick like honestly a stick a twig this big that we found in the yard and if you like showed her the stick and let her carry it or pretend to carry it then she really carried her head very pretty so for Corey I'm gonna say the same thing Corey let him carry the ball in the ring because he's gonna be very proud and carry his head right up and that is really gonna help you but on the flip side of that don't really let him have his ball except for when he's at the show. You don't want him to get bored of it. So he always associates the ball with, I'm keeping my head up in the ring. And eventually maybe you can use the ball less and less and he'll just get used to, oh, when I'm in the ring, I need to be proud and carry my head pretty. Um, and I think that that's really gonna help. Now it does take some timing, like you are gonna have to work at it where you know when to give him the ball, how excited is he gonna get in the ring. So by all means, practice this like once you get to the show or maybe practice it a little bit at home, but don't practice so much that he gets bored of it, all right? And I think that's another key component is that you don't wanna practice with your dogs too much. I always tell people, once your dog is good at something, stop practicing that. Because if you practice something that they are good at, 
the only thing they're going to do is learn how to not be good at it or they're gonna get bored of it and both of those are problems we don't need. So once my dog knows how to do something properly, I stop practicing that. Now maybe after a really frustrating practice session or I feel like nothing's going right, I might quickly do the one thing that they do great just to make myself and my dog feel better. But for the most part, if your dog knows how to do it, leave it alone, don't you know fix it if it's not broken and practice. So Corey, let me know if that helps. I wish you good luck at the shows and thank you so much for sending in your question. It was awesome. Um, and so then Christy, she sent us in a question and she has a problem that she feels that her dogs like aren't really animated in the ring. And I think that this can be a two prong problem. So like I talked before, sometimes we practice too much with our dogs and we practice that animation out of them. So we teach them how to be bored or how not to be excited when they go to do something in the ring. And I don't think that that's a great thing. Um, you know, it's something that I, it's a delicate balance between how much do you train your dogs and then how excited do you keep them. For me, I like to do a little bit of training every day, but that can be something as easy as just telling them to watch me and giving them a treat or, you know, something super easy. But yeah, if you're, you don't want to train boredom into them. So the other reason for our dogs having a lack of animation in the ring is the fact that we get tense when we go in the ring. Like I get tense when I go in the ring and I've been going in the ring for a very, very long time with many, many dogs um, for many, many shows a year and it can still be nerve wracking. So you really, and your dog doesn't know that you're nervous going into that ring. They just know that your body language changed. And a lot of times those dogs think that when your body language changes like that, that you're maybe angry with them or you're worried about something. And if you're worried, they are going to be worried as well. So you have to really, really concentrate on not letting that go down the leash, like not letting your anxiety go down the leash to your dog and making that dog wonder what's up. So one of the things that I do for this is, and I have this in my videos, is I call it the kitty kitty method and I know it sounds really stupid, but it works for me. So when I go in the ring, if I start to get nervous or I think my dog's nervous, I just go kitty, 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 kitty. Because when you're saying that, like it's so dumb, but it's, you have to say it in a relaxing voice. Like you can't go kitty, 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 right? So it's like kitty, kitty, kitty. And then that makes me relax because I'm just thinking about, that's a stupid saying. And my dog is like, wow, like that's kind of fun. Like, oh, like let's go. And it really does work. So I don't care what the word is for you or what you have to do or whether you have to think of like lollipops or ice cream or banana splits or a steak and a baked potato. Like whatever works for you to get your mind off it. Like if you have to run around the ring, like thinking steak, 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 like that's fine. For me, it's like uttering a phrase to like take that anxiety out of my dog. So I really hope that helps Christy and that I hope that you can, you know, work on getting animation into your dogs that you're really, really happy with in the ring. And I'm sure that if you continue like on that path that, you know, with the magic stick that we used earlier in the year, like you really are on the right path to having a lot of success in the show ring. And I'm really, really happy that you keep sending your questions into us because it does, you know, make a big difference for us. Um, I had another question about staining on white coats and you know staining is a really really difficult thing because no there's a difference between having a coat that's white that's not quite bright white enough like it's like washing our whites in the laundry we can get them whiter by using hot water by using different products on it but you're if you have a stain on it you need to do something to get the staining out so I want you to stay tuned for our next session of Q&A because I'm gonna have a whole list of tips and tricks that get staining out. Now, some of them involve like natural do-it-yourself things and I have had a lot of success with that. Some of them involve different products that are on the market that are gonna help lift that staining out and the things that have worked for me. But I am going to give you a tip on something that does help um, and that is, you know, when your dog does have a stain, it's just like a stain on a piece of clothing. The longer you leave it there, so if you notice that your dog is dingy and like is getting staining from mud that's outside, 
or from licking their toes or something, the longer you leave it, the harder it is going to be for you to get that out of your dog. So I want you to really remember that, right? Like it's, it's really important that you wash your dog more often and really concentrate on like getting as much of the new staining out as it comes along. So that's gonna be a big, big part of our next Q&A is a whole list of remedies for staining. So stay tuned for that. Um, lastly, before I leave you, I wanted to talk to you um, a bit more about our subscription service because it's really popular, but I am getting a lot of questions about it as well. So this is how our subscription service works. We currently have 25 active courses on Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. So we have the ultimate guide to handling your dog. We have beginner, intermediate, advanced handling, how to campaign your dog, the best dog in two minutes, which I think is mind blowing. Um, we have positive reinforcement for dog shows, like all about how to train your dog for the dog show. We have Springer Spaniel grooming courses, setter courses done by Will Alexander, like who else is better to teach you how to trim a setter than Will. Um, we have the best people from all over the world coming in and creating course material for us. Of course, we have Poodle University, and we do coaching by Skype and Facebook. So if you subscribe to the school, you get absolutely everything in the school. So you get all 25 courses that are there right now. But even more exciting than that is that as we add new courses, so we have Will Alexander and his Irish Setter course in the works. We have another world famous Cocker person going to do some Cocker Spaniel courses for us. We are gonna have Chinese Cresteds coming up, but we have the best talent from around the world bringing you courses. And if you subscribe, not only do you get the 25 courses that are up there now, but you get each and every new course as it is added. So you're gonna be notified first when it goes up. It's no extra cost for you. It just goes along with your subscription. But even more exciting than that is that we are going to work on expanding our dog show community to have the largest online dog show community in the world. We're going to have weekly forums where you can do live Q and A's with some of our guest speakers. And if you are a member, a subscription member of Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, there is going to be a separate module for you. So for new courses a year that are only available to you. So for over the next year, we are going to have how to campaign your dog, but we're gonna dive deep. We're gonna give you all the world-class tips and tricks that I've used, that Will's used, that some of the top handlers from around the world have used to campaign their dog and have success at the very, very top of our sport. After we do the How to Campaign Your Dog module, only available to subscription members, we're then gonna move on and do a nutrition module so that you can know like the very best in nutrition. We're gonna have some experts come in and talk to you about it. We're gonna talk about nutrition specifically for show dogs, like how to keep them mentally fit using some food and supplements, how to make sure that we are, we're giving their coat all the nourishment we need, they, it needs because we know that coat growth happens from the inside out, right? So we're gonna dive deep. So if you're a member every week, you're gonna get a course, a lecture that is only for you and it's gonna be on that module. So it's gonna be campaigning your dog, nutrition, then the next one is going to be physically preparing your dog for the campaign trail, which I think a lot of people don't understand how important that is. But again, members only, if you subscribe to Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, you, that's the only way to get this exclusive content. Of course, if you hold off on your subscription for whatever reason, we, were, we are gonna archive the, the stuff that comes up weekly. So it's not like you have to watch it that week, but every week for a member, there's gonna be a new lecture for you. So, you know, the subscription is one low monthly price. You have world-class instruction on everything to do in the sport of purebred dogs and exclusive member content. So, you know, I can't wait to have you all in the school. Things are just going, growing so quickly for us and we are really, really pleased to bring you the very, very best in purebred dogs and beyond. So thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so we know where you are and we know how to help you out. 
And again, please send in your questions for our next questions and answers. As I said, we're going to do a lot on coat staining and different ways to prevent and get rid of that staining. I guess getting rid of it is the most important part because, you know, if you already have it, you know, then that's what, that's your problem point. If you don't have it, you're probably already good at prevention, but we are going to do a little bit on prevention for those new people. Um, so we're really excited. So yes, send in your questions. You can email me, you can send them on Messenger, you can put them on our Facebook page, you can put them in the comments on YouTube. However we get them, it's fine. But uh, once again, I'm so happy to share this time with you and thank you so much. So head over to Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and check out our subscription. We would love to have you. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please give us a like, and if you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to our channel below. Also, check out leadingedgedogshowacademy.com for our premium content. We had a lot of fun bringing you all this information. See you soon. Bye.